And this podcasting to the outside is really for those not looking to climb K2, but those who listen to you 2 like me, why we're hiking, why we're climbing, why we're biking, why we're kayaking, or why we're just yakking around the neighborhood. We're just regular people who like to stay active and to get outside. Uh, I like to say that we're the type of people, instead of going vertical, who climb K2 or Mount Everest, we go horizontal. We'll take the long bike ride to the shore or the long hike and Batonia Trail or a kayak down the Molka River. It'll be challenging, but it's not the Bataan Death March. Each week we'll have a motivational quote. It'll be a nature quote. We'll have a tip. It'll be my tip, kind of like an everyman tip, something you might not be able to read because it's that basic. Well, we also have an event, something that you might be able to do each week around South Jersey. I also have a little theory, my double use theory, just like my truck. It's used to move people around, but it's also used to keep my gear in. Everything you have, like in camping, you have two uses for. And hopefully each week I'll have an interview with someone. Well, the quote this week is from none other than the great John Muir, the naturalist the father of conservation. He helped the Sierra Mountains stay the way they are. And he said, the closest way to the universe is through a forest wilderness. And here at Into the Outside, we salute John Muir, and we couldn't agree anymore with him. The tip for today, very simple. I went winter camping last week. There'll be a story in the Courier Post on it. And, uh, I needed matches and fire starters. Well, guess what? Strike a fire are not only matches, but they are fire starters. And I got this at Wawa. Yeah, Wawa. W-A-W-A. Or for you smart guys who can spell backwards, A-W-A-W. It has a tip, has a flint on the back, and once it's lit, you can put it right into the fire. You can strike it on your head with these short haircuts and also start a fire. The event this week is every Friday night the Outdoor Club of South Jersey, Allison and Mike Baker, has a night hike and it starts at Brendan Burns State Park at 7 o'clock. They meet right at the campground. It's right off of 72 and Route 70. And uh, if you get there about quarter of, you'll meet a dozen or so really neat people. I went out with them in November and the cool thing is it's really cool. They hike all year long. In the winter, they just bundle up in layers. They certainly know what they're doing. In the summer, of course, uh, they dress appropriately for the heat. But they welcome all guests to hike with them. It is a 10-mile hike, so you have to be in reasonably good shape. You have to finish the hike. You don't want to be left behind in the Petonia, certainly if you don't know where you're going. And they walk, walk pretty quick. It's a 15-minute brisk hike. 15 minute miles I should say so uh, when we went in November we did a 10 mile hike in about two and a half hours it, totally it was about 245 we took maybe five three minute breaks it's a lot of fun Allison and Mike Baker you can find information about it on the Outdoor Club of South Jersey they'll be hiking Friday night 7 o'clock Brendan Byrne State Park meet at the campground rain or shine And their story goes, when the British were colonizing a lot of different countries in the 18th century, they had a lot of trouble with the natives who didn't want to be colonized, understandably. So they studied their culture in this one particular country. They learned that at the age of 12 or 13, the young men, boys, would be taken by their fathers, their older brothers, out into the wilderness. And there they would wrestle, and there they would learn to fight, there they would learn the wisdom of the elders. But most importantly, at the end of the five days, they would go to this sacred rock. And at the rock, the boys would have to carve it with their hands, and their hands would be bleeding. And from that rock, they would make a spearhead. And that was their spearhead. They earned it through the hard work of those five days, wrestling with their dads and older brothers, learning the wisdom, and even carving the stone for the spearhead. 
So when they went back into camp, they had earned all the respect of the elders. They could now have their own place to stay. They could marry. They could hunt. They had all the rights of everyone else in the village. And when they came back, the women, their mothers, their aunts, and their sisters, they all greeted them with admiration. They went out and earned being a man. And it was tough, but they did it. Now the British understood to break their tradition, to have them be more English, they would have to break this rite of passage. So what they did, instead of making the young men earn the spearhead, is they just gave it to them. And within a generation, that country and their young men, as the story goes, easily became westernized, Americanized English. And here at the end to the outside, we believe in that, that you have to work hard on a hike, on a camping trip, on a bike ride, because it's more rewarding for yourself if you go out and earn it. If someone on a long bike ride to the shore picked you up halfway and drove you down, it's certainly not the same. Or on a hike, not pushing yourself to get to the end. Instead, you get carried up by a Sherpa. It's certainly not the same. So here, we want to push and we want to feel like we earn a good effort outside. And here at Into the Outside with these podcasts, we're here to help you do that. So please tune in each week and read the Into the Outside blog on CourierPostOnline.com.